the original Jurassic Park, and stop motion dinosaurs. This is my review for 1933's King Kong. A V N. It's headphones, Neil. What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with my follow-up review to my last review for Godzilla, and in this case it's going to be the 1933 film King Kong. So granted I'm going backwards in time, but because I had already started watching um, Godzilla and was thinking about reviewing that one first, I thought I would finish that one, do the review, and then review this one. But in general, my review for King Kong is going to be relatively quick just because overall the film was very well, or mostly well done in my opinion. It was on par with the quality we, or it was good in different ways compared to what we saw in Godzilla. So while Godzilla focused or did well in the storytelling and department and the um, features that they provided for Godzilla. In King Kong, the overall picture quality was felt like it was much better done than in Godzilla, so the darks were darker and more evened out. The tones were generally better, the lighting was better, generally well done, but where Godzilla shown in highlighting the main character, that's kind of where King Kong fell apart, where you could tell that it was done about 10 to 15 years prior to Godzilla, where the Godzilla and the various other animals and creatures in the movie were done using stop motion. So at the time, that was probably the better way of filming stuff, but it does not hold up and it feels like the progression or the highlighting of the picture quality that they did um, was good and it it wasn't much better or much more well presented than in Godzilla. The main character is kind of well where it feels like the budget fell apart. Um, otherwise, it feels like for the budgeting, it feels like they they were looking at more of the jungle for the trees. But then, for a movie called King Kong and where your main character should have shown, it feels like that's kind of where it fell apart and they didn't pay attention to the trees. So for me, it would have been better. Granted, they put a lot of dinosaurs in a good fight scene with uh, King Kong and the dinosaurs and the various other creatures on the plant on the island. But for me, it kind of it would have been better if they had kept the other animals out of the story and focused on the characters fighting and interacting with King Kong and King Kong with the various characters and actors than all these other creatures. So it feels like that's kind of where it fell apart. Um, granted, the effort and the uh, progress that they made as far as bringing King Kong to life was generally well done. They could have spent a little bit more on time and features and um, expense on King Kong himself rather than splitting the budget off into all these other various creatures. So that's kind of where the um, story fell apart for me was that you have this character who was very well presented, uh, Skull Island and Skull Mountain was well presented, all the various um, the tribe on the island was well done as far as um, providing um, a um, tribute to King Kong, I guess, to keep them safe or to stay away from attacking them. Um, the very the filmmaker who wanted to create the brand new sort of film um, that's big budget, over the top, um, bigger and grander than what he had done before. Um, all of that was well presented, but when you get to the character, it feels like um, it fell apart in the facial features. So it seemed initially that they wanted to spend some time with, um, to, in that initial viewing of King Kong, that they wanted to show off some of his facial features and um, show some of his emotion but it fell apart just because like it would be just because it felt like he was smiling and trying to show some emotion but it didn't really feel like it presented very well 
So it feels like some of that budget in, in creating some of the other monsters as fight scene could have been better um, spent on the budget for his face mask or spending time to um, maybe animate or create more, spend more time and effort on King Kong rather than all these other animals. And I would have kind of preferred that they spend have that one big fight to capture King Kong, bring him to back stateside to New York, and have that final fight scene with him climbing the Empire State Building, kidnapping the actress, and all the fight scene with the planes and all of that. All of that seemed to make sense, but and the, or not make sense, but rather all of that worked for me. But it just feels like when you're, it's, it was hard to take King Kong seriously when it didn't feel like he was. A character that I could, that I was generally f fearsome and someone to be feared. There were moments when he was fearsome, when he attacked some of these other uh, animals, when he was, she showed intelligence, when he was um, getting all the various guys that were attacking him off the log and into the ravine and all of that. And then his pounding his chest, the sound effects of his stomping and his scream and all of that. All of the there was enough budget on all of that, but just the animation and the stop motion that they used for all the other animals could have been better spent. That budget could have better been spent on his facial features, which is kind of where it fell apart. So overall, the movie otherwise worked for me. Um, the one thing that stood out, I was trying to find trivia, was when the group of guys, that, the filmmakers and the boat people and all of that were approaching the Tries Village, the opening doorway into the jungle reminded me a lot of Jurassic Park. So I was looking for trivia to see if that was in fact the case that Jurassic Park was inspired by that door opening but or that doorway, but nothing came up. But looking at the screenshots of the Jurassic Park doorway and then that doorway from King Kong, there's a lot of similarities, so I want to... In my mind, it looks like a subtle nod. Um, and then the otherwise, it, it felt like a Jurassic Park movie with King Kong with all the various dinosaurs and the insects and the fish creatures and all of that. So in general, it, if you ignore that this is a King Kong movie and take it as a Jurassic Park movie, overall what they accomplished was very well done for the time, even with the stop motion, so accepting that that's how they were able to accomplish the feat, it is an incredible feat that they accomplished to pull this off and pull off what we saw, so overall I want to say that the movie was very well done. Um, so compared to Godzilla, I want to say they're about equal as far as grade level. So watching this and watching them in perspective with each other, I probably give them both a grade of about a B. I think I gave Godzilla about a B minus, but watching this, I want to give them about the same grade just because they were good in their own individual um, way. So. Godzilla was good as far as bringing the creature to life and the overall tone of the story, but King Kong had better visuals and a more even color tone for being in black and white. Um, so King Kong was easier to watch except for the stop motion and the facial features on Godzilla, but in that 11 year span between the films, they were able to fix the, the special effects that they used for Godzilla. So. The only thing that really took, that kind of took things away for me was, if I'm watching them together, was the picture quality. So for me, they could have easily been made in the same year, with the only major difference is how they an decided to animate the main characters. Um, so while they spent a, lo a lot of budget in King Kong for the various creatures, the boat ride to the island, and the special effects to show the characters going around all these different characters, Godzilla spent a lot of effort on just having the one creature spend all the budget on him and then have the one character go through the town and have the character have the people in the story figure out how to um, best take the creature down and um, fight with it. So overall both were relatively interesting or both were very well done films for the time so I can see why both films have continued to be remade and continue to be, uh, be progressed over the years. So I can't wait to see this 
main fight scene, main fight and movie with between the two characters as far as Godzilla versus Kong. So um, that's all there is for this particular review. I mean, overall, I want to say that now watching, having seen both um, films in retrospect, both were good for the time. You can see the various feats that they accomplished with um, having brought these creatures to life with what they could do. They they did that in two different ways, but presented interesting storylines as well to make the movies that much more interesting. So that's all there is for this particular review. Um, that, I guess that's, there's really not much else to say really about the films. I mean, if you've never seen them, Godzilla or King Kong is notable for the, um, being captured, it kind of the film in general merges Jurassic Park one and two, where we go into the park, we introduce all these characters, and then one of the characters is brought back to New York, which happens in um, Jurassic Park two. Um, Godzilla is notable for bringing the creature to life, his fire breathing, and his destruction through Tokyo. So and through Japan, so you've seen, you've probably seen that cr um, created and uh, visualized over the years, so having seen the movie and in context, it makes the movie that much more interesting, and now I'm more aware of having, of the film and what it accomplished for its time. So that's all there is for this particular review, so the next review at the moment is going to be, um, for Godzilla vs. Kong, as far as those films go, um, so later in this week, expect that review. Um, I was thinking about watching, um, I think in 2004 or 14, the remake for Godzilla, or the sequel, I guess, based on this description, and maybe see if there was any good King Kong remakes, maybe, or Kong, I think was one of what it was called, if it's streaming on HBO Max and do a follow-up review in the meantime before we get to um, Godzilla vs. Kong. Um, just to have a more modern visualization of those films, um, time permitting. So uh, no guarantees on that, but look out for those coming soon. But that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is PatelN01.com for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. And of course, you can get bonus content, early access to upcoming content, and all of that good stuff on the Patreon at Patreon.com slash PatelN01. Uh, patrons can look out for an expected bonus episode coming in the next couple of days as well for the, all that good stuff. So by supporting the show you can get in on that stuff as well but thanks for tuning into this particular episode and until next time